Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Schaefer, consultant neurologist at the Newcastle Mitochondrial Centre. In 2006, we developed and published the Newcastle Mitochondrial Disease Scale for Adults, or NMDAS for short. The scale was developed to accurately document the natural history of these complex disorders and also to provide a relevant and comparable outcome measure for use in potential new therapies. This is the only scale of its type designed to prospectively assess the progressive multi-system involvement found in mitochondrial disease. The video has been designed as an accompaniment to the published scale which can be found on our website. One of our patients has kindly agreed to help us today in the production of this video and we'll run through the scale in real time although we will pause at certain points through the scale to discuss specific elements which require more explanation. Thank you. First we come to section 1, current function. This section deals with the patient's subjective opinion of their function over the preceding four week period. It's important in this section that the clinician's judgment of that function is not taken into account. Sylvia, your vision with your normal glasses on, can you read small print or teletext? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And do you feel that your vision with your glasses on is as good as it's ever been or is it not quite as good? It's worse. It's worse than that. Okay. So here we're circling number one because Sylvia can read uh, small print and teletext, but she does feel that her vision is not as good as it used to be. Um, we tend to try and start where we expect the patient's response to be, simply because it saves time going through the scale. Uh, so here I asked immediately about small print and teletext, because I could tell that Sylvia's vision was reasonable, so I didn't expect it to be further down the scale. Um, in terms of your hearing, Sylvia, um, can you hear things okay when you're in a busy room or do you miss things? Um, as long as I've got my hearing aids in, I can hear pretty good. Uh -huh. Not perfect. Not perfect. But could not do without my hearing aids. I would not be able to hear anything. Your speech would Fair not enough. come through. Okay. And with your hearing aids in, talking to somebody like this, do you have to ask them to repeat themselves often or not at all? Mm. Not very much, but as I say, hearing aids are never the perfect yeah. Okay. We know that Sylvia has hearing aids, but what she's said is that her hearing is not fully corrected with her hearing aids and she still misses things with background noise. But in a general one-to-one -one conversation, she doesn't usually miss words or require any repetition. Uh, so here we would be scoring three for moderate deafness, um, not fully corrected with hearing aid. Okay, so in terms of your speech, um, do you find that people have to ask you to repeat yourself at all? No, I speak pretty well. Okay, good. Okay, so there we're scoring zero for normal because communication is unaffected um, and nobody has noted any changes in the speech. Okay, so in terms of swallowing, do you find you have any problems with things either getting stuck or going down the wrong way or making you cough or choke? No, I have no problem when eating. Right, okay, so nothing seems to get stuck in your throat when no. you're eating that, okay. So there we're scoring zero for normal because there clearly aren't any significant problems. Questions five to ten, in particular, deal with functions which may be affected either by a single cause, such as myopathic weakness, or may be aff uh, affected by multiple causes, each contributing to that reduction in function. It's important in this section to assess the function alone, irrespective of the contributory causes. So, for instance, exercise intolerance may be limited by myopathic weakness, but it may also be limited by cerebellar ataxia or by breathlessness due to cardiac involvement. In terms of your handwriting, do you find your handwriting is exactly the same as it's ever been? It's not slower no, or clumsier? it hasn't changed at all. Okay, fine. So again, we're going to score zero for normal because there clearly haven't been any changed. It'd be worth mentioning uh, at this point, going through the scale, that uh, in people who do have a lot of problems with their handwriting and do report that it's very much slowed and that they struggle or resort to printing, it's often worth asking the patient to just write in capitals, the black cat, uh, just at the bottom of a page so that you can witness what their writing is like and how long that takes. Um, if that takes in excess of 30 seconds, uh, then they would be scoring four. If they're unable to write legible writing at all, they would be scoring number five. 
Um, in terms of cutting up food using things like knives and forks, uh, do you have any difficulties with that? Do you find that that's slower, clumsier, difficulty gripping the implements? No. No. Okay. So that's the same as it's ever been. Okay. So again, we'll be scoring zero. Um, and in terms of getting dressed, do you find that that is exactly the same as it used to be in terms of the time and effort that it takes to get dressed? Or do you find that these days it's a little bit slower or more difficult? It's the same as always. Okay. So you don't have any difficulties, say, doing shoelaces, getting socks on, getting into sort of uh, jeans? I do or not. No. Okay. So again, that would be normal. All right. Um, in terms of getting washed and bathed, any difficulties in the bathroom in terms of uh, trying to get in and out of baths or do the usual sort of chores, brushing teeth and that sort of thing? I can have a shower, no problem. Right, okay. No problem. And what about a bath? I don't use the bath. Okay. And I is don't that have a bath. Okay, right. So it's not because it's difficult, it's just how your bathroom's set up. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. And you don't feel that it takes longer to have a shower than it used to, say, 10, 15 years ago? No. No, okay, great. So again, we're scoring zero uh, for that because there's no obvious um, difficulties in terms of effort or time. You'll note on question nine, exercise intolerance, that we deal with both distances walked and also the ability to climb stairs. When scoring this particular section, we use the better of the two values. In terms of exercise tolerance, um, how far do you feel on the flat that you could walk compared to, say, somebody who doesn't have any problems before you have to stop and have a rest? Would it be, for instance, a kilometre or half a kilometre or less than that? Half. Half a kilometre, something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of going up steps, can you manage a full flight of steps without having to stop for a rest? Probably. Giving, giving a good day, yeah. I'm not saying I could do it every day because that's, that's fine. That's if it's a bad day, no okay. way. Fair enough. So, so there we have a sort of feel for how far Sylvia can walk on the flat and also in terms of steps. She's actually slightly worse in terms of on the flat, probably in the region of able to walk about five, uh, 500 metres or so, but possibly slightly better, particularly with what she said about the steps. So I would score that as a two below 1,000 metres, more than 500 metres, but also managing a full flight of steps. In terms of your balance, when you're walking, and this is on your own without anybody else helping you, do you feel like you're steady on your feet? No. No, okay. And do you always feel off balance when you're walking, or is it only if you're walking on uneven ground or when you're turning? Always problems. Oh, always off balance, okay. And do you ever suffer any falls? No. No, okay. So in terms of the scoring, uh, what we have is a report of an unsteady gait and always being off balance when walking. So there we would be scoring number three. When assessing current function, it's important for questions six through to 10 that the function is assessed irrespective of the contributory factors. So it doesn't matter if that patient is having difficulty using uh, utensils such as knives and forks because of weakness or because of cerebellar ataxia, or because of proprioceptive loss, or because of extra pyramidal features. It all counts purely based on the impairment of the function. The wording of the questions is really very important just to make sure that there is no variation between raters uh, when assessing the scale.